I don't care how late you stay out. Stay out as late as you want. You wanna borrow the new car? You wanna borrow my credit card? Kids today, they really have it rough. I have no idea where we are or where we're going. I mean, when I was their age, life was easy, super easy. Why haven't you gotten a tattoo yet? How come you don't have any piercings yet? Yep, we're lost. We are completely lost. Ooh, sports. It, it, just do whatever the mechanic says to do. Vehicle maintenance is completely overrated. Look, whatever the mechanic is asking, just pay him. Pay him whatever he wants. I wish they had soap operas at night. I like that boy. You should date him. You should date him immediately. Well, what about the creepy guy with the motorcycle? He's cute. Yeah, sure. Spring break in Tahiti sounds fun. Hey, make sure you get all your video games done before you start your homework. You don't have to pass all your classes. What? You have a project due tomorrow and you've known about it for four weeks and you haven't started yet? Sweet! Doesn't anybody want to know if we're there yet? Remember, if you need anything between midnight and 4 a.m., please come wake me up. Hey, I'm on the phone. Could you bring the baby over and let him climb all over me? Hey! Hey, can you please turn that music up? Well, we just stopped for lunch 10 minutes ago, but yeah, let's stop again. I never have trouble with my toddler. I never have trouble with my teenagers. I never have trouble with my adult children. You know, she's right. We are ruining her life. Yes, more homework to correct. All right, whining. Yay, tantrums. Mmm, <laughs> vomit. We just really need to spoil these kids more. Sorry, buddy. I don't know any good jokes at all. You're 16. You pretty much know everything now. I think 18's a great age to get married. Okay, remember, make sure you turn on all the lights before you leave the house. Hey, could you leave the front door open for a couple hours? Thanks. Whoa, money really does grow on trees. Good morning. We welcome you to the Abbey Reformed United Church of Christ on this special day, Father's Day. Pastor Donna is on vacation today, and we are holding our traditional Father's Day service at Lake Racetown, which means there is technically no in-person service in our sanctuary today. However, for those of you who choose to worship with us online, we wanted to offer a brief devotional service for you this morning in lieu of our traditional Sunday morning service. As a reminder, if you have any prayer requests, please feel free to call or submit your request to Louita at the church office. We will add those requests to our prayer list. Let us now join together in a spirit of worship and praise to our Heavenly Father with this loving reminder that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome at the Abbey Reformed United Church of Christ.
This morning's responsive call to worship is based on Psalm 130. Lift up your voice and call out to God. We cry out, believing that God hears us. Come together and wait for God. We come together, trusting that God is still speaking. Surely God's presence is here with us now. We wait in hope, for God's steadfast love lifts our hearts. Come, worship the Lord. We celebrate the power of God that restores us. I invite you now to open your hearts and minds to receive these offerings of God's holy word. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from Proverbs chapter 4, verses 1 through 5 and 10 through 13. Listen, my sons, to a father's instruction. Pay attention and gain understanding. I give you sound learning, so do not forsake my teaching. When I was a boy in my father's house, still tender and an only child of my mother, he taught me and said, lay hold of my words with all your heart. Keep my commands and you will live. Get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget my words or swerve from them. Listen, my son, accept what I say, and the years of your life will be many. I guide you in the way of wisdom and lead you along straight paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hampered. When you run, you will not stumble. Hold on to instruction. Do not let it go. Guard it well, for it is your life. And a second reading this morning, also from Proverbs chapter 23, verses 22 through 26. Listen to your father who gave you life, and do not despise your mother when she is old. Buy the truth and do not sell it. Get wisdom, discipline, and understanding. The father of a righteous man has great joy he who has a wise son delights in him. May your father and mother be glad. May she who gave you birth rejoice. My son, give me your heart and let your eyes keep to my ways. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Great and loving God, we ask your Holy Spirit to bless our time together and that you refresh us with your presence. In the midst of a world full of trouble and strife, we thank you for watching over us, guiding us, and especially forgiving us. Enable us to enter your presence joyfully and reverently, and let us depart today 
with the assurance that our sins are forgiven. Fill us, O God, with the peace that only you can provide. Amen. In preparing for this morning's devotion, I found myself considering the role of fathers and what that means to each of us. Having a special day to honor fathers gives us the opportunity to call special attention to those men who have played an important role in our lives in many ways. And while I see the value and joy in taking the time to recognize and celebrate our earthly fathers, I must admit that it is difficult for me to think about what it means to be a father without considering the overwhelming spiritual qualities of our Heavenly Father. When we look at Father's Day through a sacred lens, we are presented with a sacred integrity of fatherhood that can only be offered through God, our Heavenly Father. When we consider the scriptures, there are 71 Bible verses alone that reference the responsibilities of being a father. It is very apparent that God places great importance on this role. There are clear directives on the many responsibilities that God maintains for those who are fathers. These descriptions include ways a father should lead, teach, provide, discipline, correct, protect, and love his children. A godly father is to bring up his children in discipline and instruction of the Lord. In other words, the father is to be the spiritual head of the home. His presence should be felt in the home, in its rules, in worship, and through the father's gentle love, leadership, and example. It is important for a godly father to spend time teaching his children how to do what is good and right and to avoid what is wrong. It is the father's responsibility to teach his children about following the pathway of righteousness that will ultimately lead to life in God's eternal kingdom. This is no small task and in today's society may seem especially difficult because of the numerous demands on a father's time and energy. It requires a great deal of self-discipline in order to fulfill God's call to be a spiritually guided earthly father and to be grounded in the biblical principles of fatherhood. A godly father delights in, loves, corrects, instructs, disciplines, provides for, leads, and contributes a legacy to his children. As challenging as all of this may seem, there is great encouragement and comfort in the reality that fathers are not left to figure this out on their own. Not only through the guidance of scriptures, but by the modeling of our Heavenly Father, Men have an exceptional example to follow of how to be a godly father. God's provisions of wisdom, compassion, discipline, faithfulness, and forgiveness provide an exemplary model of fatherhood. For those of us who have been blessed and fortunate enough to have good earthly fathers, it is perhaps easier for us in learning to trust and accept God as our Heavenly Father. This belief may feel more comfortable and familiar than for someone who perhaps had the negative experience of having a father who fell far short of the expectations of his role. The willingness to recognize, acknowledge, and trust that there can possibly be a loving God who is the perfect father requires great risk. God wants us to accept his unconditional love as our Heavenly Father who is ever-present, compassionate, and merciful, 
whose love transcends our earthly understanding of fatherhood. Through his sacrifice and faithfulness, God has created the perfect place for us to call home in his loving arms as our Father, where he will love and protect us. In closing, it is my prayer that on this special day set aside to honor our fathers, as you take the time to reflect on the blessings of your earthly fathers, you will also find time to be mindful of the constant presence of our Heavenly Father. Recognize the role that he has and will continue to have in your life. Find peace and comfort knowing that his place as your eternal father is the most promising relationship you can have. I offer you the assurance of God's promise that he will never leave nor forsake us. Psalm 100 verse 5 tells us, For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Amen. Please join me now for a responsive prayer for Father's Day. Let us praise those fathers who have sought to balance the demands of work, marriage, and children with an honest awareness of both joy and sacrifice. Let, Let us praise those fathers who, without, without a good model for a father, have worked to become a good father. Let us praise those fathers who, by their own account, were not always there for their children, but who now offer those children their love and support. Let, Let us pray for those fathers who have been wounded by the neglect and hostility of their children. Let us praise those fathers who, despite divorce, have remained in their children's lives. Let us praise those fathers who have adopted children and whose love and support have offered new life. Let us praise those fathers who, as stepfathers, freely chose the obligation of fatherhood and always strive for their stepchildren's love and respect. Let us pray for those fathers who have lost a child to death and, and continue, continue to, to hold the child, the child in, their in their heart. Let us praise those men who have no children, but cherish the next generation as if they were their own. Let, Let us praise, praise those men who have fathered us in their role as, as mentors, mentors and guides. Let us praise those men who are about to become fathers and pray that they openly delight in their children. And, and let, let us praise fathers who have died, but always live on in our memory, and whose love continues to nurture us. Amen. Amen.